Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So tonight we're gonna to be doing a store haul. I've got eight bottles that we're gonna be adding to the shelves with a speakeasy. I have not done a bottle kill in a, in a haul video for a while. Normally I like to show what I've been killing off as I, as I bring new things into the speakeasy. I like to show what I'm, I'm taking out of the speakeasy. Well, I haven't done it for a while. So tonight we're gonna to start off by catching up on bottle kills. Forgive me, there's been quite a bit. So there's, this is going to take a few minutes. But uh, but these are some really good bottles that we have we have enjoyed and we have killed them and they're going away, going to the old retirement home for, for bottles. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just jump on into that. So the first off tonight from that is this Knob Creek Old Fashioned. It comes in at 70 proof, it, really easy. All you do, open it up, put it over some ice and enjoy. And it's a pretty solid old fashioned. Normally I don't like old fashioned or pre-made cocktail type stuff. I love old fashions, but normally I don't like pre-made cocktails. And it was actually one of the best pre-made cocktails, particularly pre-made old fashions that I've ever had. So uh, enjoyed that really quickly and killed it off. It, it's been gone for quite a while and so I don't even remember what it tastes like, but it was really good. I do remember enjoying it. So uh, that's, uh, that's a little bit sad to see this one go. Next up tonight is this Bullet Single Barrel. This was a Virginia ABC store pick of Bullet. Normally I'm not a huge bullet guy. It's, it's okay to me. I don't hate bullet or anything, but this single barrel came in at 104 proof, a little bit stronger than standard bullet. So it was, it was probably the best bullet I've ever had. So a little sad to see it go, but had to make some space on the uh, shelves of the speakeasy. All right, next up is a Maker's Mark Stave Profile ABC store pick from the Virginia ABC. This one is called Hint of Chocolate. Now, I ended up trying to, I'm, I've got a bunch of Maker's Mark stuff sitting on the shelf. I've kind of accumulated a bunch of different store picks and store profiles. I gotta start working through them. I do enjoy them. They're not my favorites, but they're usually really, really solid picks. What it really was to me was a really, really good sipper. I tried making cocktails with this one did not work at all. That chocolate note was just really kind of off-putting anytime I tried to mix it with any kind of a fruitiness. It just didn't seem to work this time. Anyway, it was really a pretty good pick. I'm not super sad to see it go. I've got so many other Maker's Mark uh, profiles and store picks and stuff. These bottle kills were accumulated over like maybe two months. Like I said, I haven't done it. If you go back and look at the last two or three store uh, store haul videos we did, there are not a lot of bottle kills in them. And I think all of them have zero. So this is catching up on, on, some, uh, on some work that... Uh, some, some hard work and dedication that we put into uh, finishing off some of these bottles. Now, this next one up tonight is the Old Forester 1910. This is the bottle that Jamie fell in love with 1910. This is what her got her actually drinking bourbon. This was an exceptional one. It is a new label one. It was the first new label one we we purchased. I do have another new label on the shelf already, as well as a an old label I picked up recently. So we're gonna have to maybe get those side by side and let Jamie play around with those some. But uh, I'm really sad to see this one go. This is the one that Jamie joked about uh, putting next to the picture of the kids during a, a video. However, this was a, a good bottle. Sad to see this one go. Always, always have to uh, replace the uh, 1910s when they uh, when they get killed around here. All right, here we have a Four Roses store pick. This comes from the State Line Liquor Store, which is right on the border of Maryland and Delaware. It's right off of 95. It's a really, really solid store. If you're ever in the area, I'd highly recommend it. When I bought this bottle, it's, it's actually the same trip uh, same time I went there and I also got a Remus 2, Remus Repeal Reserve 2, and a Remus Repeal Reserve 4. Finally killed this bottle off. It's an OBSK if you follow the Four Roses, you know, yeast combinations. This is an OBSK. It's aged nine years and five months. If you are ever looking for um, interesting store picks, the Four Roses uh, different yeast combinations can be some really, really interesting uh, interesting things to pick up, especially with the age you get almost a 10 year. Usually they're nine to 10 a year-ish store picks and they're they're really pretty good. So definitely check those out if you haven't. Even if you don't like the standard uh, four rows of stuff, the small batch, the small batch select, or the standard on the shelf single barrel, the store picks, in my opinion, uh, for the most part are better than all three of them. So definitely check those out. We are working through them as fast as we can tonight. Here we have another Maker's Mark product. This is a Maker's Mark 46 cast strength. Again, I kind of focused a little bit on trying to knock out some makers to make some room. There's a huge section behind me with tons of different makers products, and I'm trying to thin that down a little bit to make room for some other stuff that I've been picking up that I think is more interesting in some ways than, than standard Maker's Mark stuff. So this is a Maker's Mark 46 cast strength, comes in at 109.6 proof. This was really, really good. To me, Maker's Mark cast strength stuff or Maker's Mark 101. Maker's 46 cast strength, Maker's Mark Cast Strength and Maker's Mark 101 are all really, really good picks to me, way better than the standard Maker's Mark or the Maker's 46. It was a very good bottle, but had to make room for some other stuff that's more interesting to me. Last one up tonight is the 
Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered. This particular one is a batch 45. I ended up getting two Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered almost at exactly the same time. This one was opened and was had like, you know, a couple pours out of it and then somebody didn't want it. But then the second one I got was from, uh, some, from somebody who picked one up for me out in Las Vegas. So that one went onto the shelves in the speakeasy down here. And this one went to the cabinet upstairs that, uh, that easy access cabinet in the dining room. If you haven't had Smoke Wagon, Small Batch, Smoke Wagon Uncut and Filter, they're really, really good product. Highly recommend them. Definitely, definitely check it out as a, uh, a foolproof, uncut, unfiltered, really, really pretty solid bourbon. So anyway, that's all the bottle because we have tonight. We've got the bottles down. Let's jump right into this. So this first one was a trade I made with Scott. Now, Scott was kind enough. He was telling me about this really interesting Irish American whiskey that's being produced up in Minnesota from O'Shaughnessy, I think, distillery. Anyway, he was telling me about this. This is called Keeper's Heart. It's a blend of Irish and American sourced whiskeys. This is a, it's actually a rye whiskey in the American side. But what they describe is Irish whiskeys blended with American rye whiskey. We combine the unique qualities of the Irish grain and single pot still whiskeys with American rye whiskey for a remarkable drinking experience comes in at 86 proof. So one of the really cool things about having a YouTube channel is when people reach out to me and help me get a hold of stuff that's just new and interesting and stuff I can't get around here. This is supposedly a collaboration or, or the, the distiller who did this well, used to work for Jameson. So being able to have you know the, the legacy of Jameson uh, with uh, blending it with some rye whiskey and I don't know where the source of the whiskey comes from. I'm not saying it's James. I don't know. But the blend of the two sounds kind of interesting to me. I'm kind of excited to put it up to some of the other blended whiskeys that I have. We're kind of excited to try that and uh, and get that on the shelves of Speak Easy. So thank you so much, Scott. Next up tonight is this Deconic Distillery Double Barrel Maple Bourbon. Now, this is a straight bourbon whiskey barreled with New York maple syrup. Comes in at 90 proof. Now, this was a gift to Jamie from Keith up in New York. Keith, thank you so much. Great support of the channel. Always appreciate it. And he sent this, you know, you guys, uh, Jamie has gotten into this maple bourbon thing. She loves it. So he sent this down for her to try. It was not quite sweet enough for Jamie. She liked it okay. She didn't love it. It was, it was decent, but, but I had it and I thought it was fantastic because this to me is what I would want from a maple bourbon. It's a bourbon. It tastes like a bourbon, but it has a little bit stronger maple syrup note than you would get from just a traditional bourbon that that is maple that has like some maple flavor in the palate this one it's obviously more pronounced than that but they didn't overdo it and it's perfect and some of the other ones that we've trying and the, the ones that jamie loves they're just too sweet for me there's there's too much maple syrup going on this is like the perfect maple bourbon in my opinion and it's a fantastic fantastic product uh, I'm extremely excited. Been sipping on this one just a little bit here and there. So Keith, thank you so much. This is, I know you meant it for Jamie, but I'm stealing it. So I, I love this one. So you guys know this is whiskey row, not bourbon row. I say that every time I start dragging out scotches and I've done it again. This is an Akintoshin three wood coming in at 86 proof, so it's a low proof, standard scotch kind of proof. Ages gracefully in American bourbon casks, finishing in Spanish Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry cask. The result is smooth and complex with rich fruits, chocolate, and toasted hazelnut. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, I actually got this before I filmed the scotch for bourbon lovers. I have high hopes that it's going to be a good option for bourbon lovers. So maybe we'll do another one of those down the road. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out. Obviously, it's it's if you're at all interested in scotch and you're a bourbon guy, even just to learn about scotch. And I'm really excited to get this one on the shelves in the speakeasy. Oh man, all right. Here's a Weller Antique 107. It comes in at 107 proof. It's an old Weller Antique 107. It's pretty good. I don't love them. They're okay. I pick them up uh, for two reasons. There's two reasons why I get this one, these. Uh, usually I trade for them. The reason why is because I can use them to make poor man's pappy. Uh, to me, if you take a Weller 107 and a Weller 12, imagine there's a pretty Weller one, a Weller 12 bottle right here, and you combine them and then put them into an, another bottle and, and call it a poor man's pappy, it's fantastic. The 60-40 blend, 60% Weller 107, 40% Weller 12, you blend them together and you get what people call a poor man's pappy, and it's fantastic. It's so, so good. It's so much better than the Weller 12, and it's so much better than the Antique 107. Ever since I discovered and had my first poor man's pappy pour and actually tasted it, I'm hooked. It's fantastic. So now I look for Weller 12s and Weller 107s to make poor man's pappy because it's better than either one of them by themselves. 
and it's it's a great great pour anyway so this is essentially going to be made into a poor man's pappy and then i'm going to be a really happy person all right guys we're working hard we're trying to get through these as quick as we can tonight now up next is a four roses single barrel this one is coming in at 121.8 proof uh, this one is coming out of the state of new york it is aged 10 years and two months it is an oeso which I'm extremely excited. It's supposed to be the really, really rich fruit one. This barrel strength version uh, was a gift from Keith up in New York. He bought Jamie the, the maple bourbon as a gift, and then he bought me this one as a gift because he didn't want me to feel left out. And now the truth is I have two delicious bottles. This one, and, well, I haven't opened it yet, but I'm assuming it's delicious because it should be. Uh, but this one, and, and I'm claiming the Taconic Maple Bourbon as well as my own. Very, very excited to have this in the shelves of the Speakeasy. Like I've said, if you are sleeping on the Four Roses single barrel picks uh, from your local store, from the state, whatever it is, but look for the different yeast combination recipes. Uh, this one's an OESO. The OBSO is really, really interesting. The, that last one was, an, uh, I think, an OESK or OBSK. It was really, really good. They're much better, in my opinion, than the standard Four Roses offering, so, so definitely check those out. All right, up next tonight is a Remus Repeal Reserve 3. When I was up in Maryland at the Stateline Liquor Store, it was over the last winter, I ended up picking the Remus 2 and the Remus 4 up from that store. I've since added the Remus 5 I got here in Virginia. So now I have the Remus 2, 3, 4, and 5. Very, very excited. So far between the 2, 4, and 5, I've enjoyed the 5 the most. I think it's the best one that I've had. So I'm really excited to get the 3 open and put it next to the others and see how it compares. Don't have a 1. Maybe someday I'll stumble across one, but I doubt it at this point. It's been been too long. This was a trade I got from Mark uh, in North Carolina. And we, uh, when Jamie and I were driving down to Georgia to be with our family in Georgia, South Carolina, uh, you guys saw the live stream down at Jamie's daughter's. On the way down, we met Mark at a Starbucks and we, we made a trade. So thank you so much, Mark, in helping me get this. I really appreciate it. I traded him a Nulu Toasted Bourbon which I think he was really excited for. So I hope you enjoy that one, Mark. And uh, thank you so much. I'm really excited about this one. All right, we're running out of bottles here, guys. Only two more to go. Now, this is a Murray Hill Club bourbon from Joseph Magnus here in D.C. Very excited to get this one. This has been on the, my watch list for a while. Now, they released this in Virginia, and you can get it. It's just really hard to find. This was made available to me uh, by from Keith up in New York. He offered to pick one up, uh, up there for me and send it down. And I, I was tempted to just pass and then pick it up locally. They were coming out at the same time. The problem is, is here in Virginia, this was distributed in a really weird way. It was like randomly hitting different stores. There was no pattern to it. There's no way to really hunt it other than just get purely lucky. So I took Keith up on the offer and I paid him for it. Just a little over retail. So really excited to get this Murray Hill Club. I've never had one of these and I've never had one of the cigar blends either. And I, I want to get one of those at some point as well. I, I didn't love their standard Joseph Magnus, the $90, $80 one, but I've heard really, really good things about this one as well as the cigar. I'm hopeful that this one will be really good, and then I'm hopeful that the cigar blend will be really good too, and hopefully worth the price. The cigar blend can be pretty expensive. This one's, you know, was like I said, around 100 and paid 112 for it, so just a little bit over retail. Uh, not too bad. Excited to get this one open and try it though, because I've, I've heard so much good things about this. So thank you, Keith. Appreciate it. Now, early in the YouTube channel, if you go way, way back to the early videos of the channel, I took a trip up to New York with Jamie last December, I think. And while we were there, I went to a liquor store and one of the stores, they in one of the stores, they had a 1792 12 year. First time I ever saw a 1792 12 year. And that was one of the bottles that was on my wish list, something I was willing to chase and spend a little bit of money for. Anyway, but I picked that one up. And since then, you know, I really like the 1792 full proof, the 1792 bottle and the bond and the 1792 12 year. But one 1792 product that I've really wanted for a very long time that I never was able to find, 1792 sweet weed. I've already opened it and had a pour because I couldn't wait to film. Sometimes the, the store halls stack up and, and this was just something that I've I've wanted for a long time. So, so I just, I opened it up. I've had uh, two glasses out of it so far. It's primo, it's so, so good. So smooth, so easy sipping, just, Everything that you'd want from from a nice weeded bourbon, this this is just fantastic. The proof obviously low, so if you you like the higher proofed weeded stuff, this isn't going to work. But uh, paid ninety seven for it, so obviously over over retail, but more than happy to pay that for this for my first bottle of this. Thank you, Keith. But uh, he got this, sent it down. Again, I'm very very ecstatic about this one. This was a this was a, a primo primo one for me that I've I've wanted for a very long time. Anyway, that's the that's the video for tonight. That's everything that we have pulled in 
for this video, at least I still have another one. Got to do some more store haul videos because it, it, it just keeps coming. And uh, I love sharing this with you guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really, really appreciate your guys' support. Thank you through the Patreons for all that you do. If you ended up enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love. Thank you.